Thank you for joining. In this lesson, I will explain how to connect an SQL database to Visual Studio. I don't want to change the subject of this lesson and discuss ASP.NET Core with Entity Framework. However, it's important to mention that sooner or later you will encounter scenarios where you need to connect a SQL database to Visual Studio. I cannot claim that using SQL with Visual Studio provides great performance, as SQL Server Management Studio is specifically designed for database management and administration, offering a more comprehensive set of tools and features for these tasks. However, there are circumstances where connecting to a SQL Server instance in Visual Studio might be more appropriate and advantageous. For example, you might use database projects to manage database schemas with version control and deploy changes. It can also be useful for application development using Entity Framework to create and manage Entity Data Models that connect to SQL Server databases locally within Net Development. And this can help prevent errors when working in a team. Additionally, you may require custom tools, or you might simply need a connection string example, and so on. Before we begin, I want to remind you that in the first lesson I mentioned that data storage and processing is a part of the Visual Studio installation you should have it installed as a part of Visual Studio. To access the database, open Visual Studio. If you don't have a project open, you can create a new project by selecting a template, such as ASP.NET Core Web API. Follow the prompts without changing any settings, pressing Next. And finally, click Create. Alternatively, if you already have a project, you can open it. This current project is based on NetCore 7 and uses Entity Framework. From Visual Studio, you can navigate to View and select SQL Server Object Explorer. As a reminder, this menu may not appear if data storage and processing is not installed. To install it, you can download it from Tools and then Get Tools and Features. Please disregard these two databases we have listed here for now. I will explain them later in this lesson. To begin, click on the Add SQL Server button and then select the first server from the local menu. In your case, it might also be the second server, so feel free to try the second one, if the first one doesn't work. Once you've made your selection, click Connect. You will notice an additional item has appeared. If you open it, you will see the databases we created in the previous lesson using SQL Server Management Studio. The Bike Store, Stellar Holdings and the HiKaiTalk database that I'm using for the NetCore project are all here. To perform a new query, simply right-click on the database and a standard menu will appear, including the option for a new query request. Let's select that. In the pop-up window, you can write your query. For example, you can write Select, then All, From, then choose Production and Products. Afterward, you can either click the Execute button or use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl Shift E, and then click on Results. A new window will pop up, displaying all the results you wanted to see. Now let's return to the Object Explorer. There are two databases we need to discuss. The first one, LocalDB MSSQLDB, is a special instance of SQL Server Express that comes installed with Visual Studio. This instance is designed to be lightweight and easy to use, making it an ideal choice for developers who require a relational database for development and testing purposes. It simulates the SQL Server environment on our local machine without demanding the full resources of a SQL Server instance. In terms of its type, if we open its properties, you will find it listed as Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition. The second database is created when we initiate a NetCore application project, typically to interact with Entity Framework, as example. This local database associated with the NetCore project in Visual Studio also functions as a simulation, in the conventional sense. It's a database instance that you can interact with during the development phase. However, it's primarily intended for development and testing purposes. And it differs from a production database in various ways, such as scope, setup, testing, isolation, and more. Nonetheless, its type is also identified as Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition. Additionally, during development you might encounter a need to utilize a local database. In such cases, you can create a database directly from Visual Studio by selecting Add New Database. This particular database will be generated on a real instance. If you navigate to SQL Server Management Studio and refresh the Object Explorer, 
you will find this newly created database visible there as well. Here is what we achieved in Visual Studio. We have attached a database to the SQL Server instance. From this point forward, whenever we access this instance, we will find the database already attached to it. In other words, when you work with any relational database management system and add a database, that added database remains associated with the SQL Server instance. It would be more accurate to say that the database is hosted by SQL Server instance, and you can access and manage it through that instance. This is how SQL Server operates, and you can interact with the database using tools like SSMS, Visual Studio, or any other RDBMS software. In Visual Studio, if you click on the database, you will access its properties, which include the connection string. If you require the database connection string for use in your project, simply open the App Settings JSON file within your project. Inside this file, you will find a specific field for inserting connection strings. You can then copy the connection string of the database and paste it here. By using dependency injection in your project, you can conveniently access and utilize this connection string throughout your project. If you need guidance on obtaining a connection string to the database from Visual Studio using Netcore and Entity Framework, please follow the link provided below the video. The link will take you to the relevant section of the video for step-by-step -step instructions. In the next lesson, I will explain various techniques for reading queries efficiently and understanding them in a simple and rapid manner. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!